crumbs, what happened to the world? Oh yeah, too much stuff to possibly comprehend in a YouTube video intro. The prices of stuff is rising, including flour and power. So how do we continue to make our own bread at home while still keeping the cost low? Well, let's talk about it, shall we? Roll it! Hey, home bakers, are you feeling the pinch? Yeah, me too. But at times like these, and in times like any, let us not give up on our hobbies, hey? Because aren't they the things that bring us true value in life? And is that not the point? Last time we calculated the cost of a homemade loaf of bread it was way back in 2018, and it came out 56.8p per loaf. That's for the ingredients here in the UK, and I didn't count water because water is just water. Now, in present times, in 2022, a swift calculation reveals a price rise of 34.6p per loaf, bringing the total cost to 91.4 pence. That's a 61% increase. Yeah, maths. It still works out a little bit cheaper than a standard shop-bought loaf that rests in somewhere between £1.10, £1.40 for a standard no frills loaf of bread. And it's worth mentioning here, those two things are not the same, are they? We know that as home bakers, those two things are miles apart. But what it does mean is that the cost difference is not as far away as it once was. And I didn't even factor in the cost of the energy to run your oven, did I? <laughs> tut, tut, tut. Mm. If the aim for us is to continue our life enriching hobby while making the whole process more cost effective and feasible, then the things we can change kind of fit into two separate categories. One, we can reduce the cost of the things we put in. And two, we can increase the value of the things we get out. And yes, I said things. To reduce the cost, we need to think about the two things we put in, ingredients and power. Hmm? Let's start with ingredients being the most uh, obvious cost, isn't it? Flour is the biggest contributor to our bread recipe and also the biggest contributor to the rise in price. I use a kind of mid-range branded flour that used to cost me £1.50 a bag and now cost me £2.40. A quick search at the supermarket reveals that a supermarket own brand flour kind of works out 43.3 pence per loaf. Sorry, 43.3. I missed that day at school. That's a pretty hefty discount, isn't it? But there is something to be aware of uh, when choosing budget flours that might have an adverse effect on your bread at the end, depending on how you look at it. But hey, I digress. That's something we're gonna talk about in a future video. Probably next week. Supermarket flour does make great bread too, and it's an easy way to save cash. Everything else on the board over there is pretty much a non-mover, unless you're using pink salt mined from deep within the Himalayan mountains from abundant salt beds formed in the Jurassic era around about 250 million years ago, in which case, just use regular salt, yeah? I can't get hold of fresh yeast anymore. In fact, it's trickier. COVID put a stop to the one-on-one, hand-to-hand, over-the-counter transaction that yet used to be. And so now I use dry, which is the reason for the yeast price increase. Typically, fresh yeast is cheaper than dry yeast. Even if you have got to use double, it still works out cheaper. So if you can get hold of it where you are, get hold of that. So then the other cost is power, electricity, or gas, and the best thing about saving power is that you're never saving one thing, you're always saving three things. In saving power, you're saving power, you're saving money, and you're saving the world, by the way. There are three things in this category we can talk about to reduce power or save it completely. And yes, I said completely. Firstly, you bake more in one go. Yeah, it sounds obvious, doesn't it? But if you've got multiple loaf tins, consider baking multiple loaves at once. Your standard loaf recipe in bread every day is for two loaves. Why? Because it's double the practice, it's double the bread, half the power and time. Most standard ovens will actually fit four loaves in at once, but there's two things to think about here. One is that you've got to have four loaf tins and two is that that makes a dough of 2,000 grams of flour, that's two kilos of flour, that's a 3.5 kilo dough, quite a lot of dough to manage in one go. The point here is that all that power, electricity and gas, just for one loaf is a bit much, isn't it? Bake more in one go, you can always freeze what you don't need, and your freezer's always running anyway, so make use of it. Secondly, bake while something else is baking. Are you roasting sweet potatoes for dinner? Perhaps you are roasting aubergines and peppers for the poi lentil and roasted garlic salad on page 184 of Bread 
every day. Well, why not pop your loaf of bread in the oven at the same time? Hmm? This is great because not only is it basically free power, but you also get bonus steam. All that steam coming off your roast chicken or whatever's in there will benefit your bread massively. You're baking your bed for free, and you don't even have to boil the kettle. Thirdly, bake in a cold oven, not completely cold. Okay, that's called clickbait. This one requires a little bit of tinkering because it really relies on your oven. All ovens kind of probably preheat at a different time. But if you start your baking in a cold oven, well then you're saving preheating time, aren't you? For this, I prove my bread slightly less than normal and then put it on the shelf in the cold oven, filling up the steam tray with hot water from the kettle as normal. Then I turn the oven on around about 200, 220, and the loaf is baked in about 45 minutes. Baking your oven from cold removes the cost of preheating the oven with nothing inside. Decreasing the cost of what goes in uh, and what we spend is, is one thing, but let's move on because nobody ever talks about increasing the value of what you get out, do they? Apart from us. There are five things in this category, some more obvious than others. And the first one is to extend keeping quality. We've already spoken about the best way to extend keeping quality, which is to put stuff in the freezer. But there are other ways. Putting a little bit of oil into a recipe is what I do these days, and it helps keep your bread softer for longer. It is an additional cost though at 15 grams per loaf, working out about seven pence extra. Hey, let's add that to our board, shall we? But is the additional cost worth it? Probably, yeah, probably. Take care when slicing. My wife made a loaf of bread one time. Yeah, it came out all right. And <laughs> let me tell you, she sliced that one differently to anything that I would knock up. Why? Because she's more invested in it. Of course she is, she made it. She took more attention in slicing it. She got more slices out of it and therefore more value. Slice it with more care, slice it thinner and get more slices out of it. I did one the other day deliberately for this purpose and I got like 18 slices out of it, which is nine sandwiches, which is great. And earlier we spoke about freezing, slice the whole loaf, pop it in a bag and put it in the freezer and then you can take it out slices as you need. Make a frozen sandwich in the morning, it's defrosted by lunchtime. Take slices out, put them straight into the toaster, that way you don't have to defrost the whole loaf and then risk getting to the end bits and then getting a bit hard by the time you get there. You could even make rolls instead of loaves. If I got 18 slices out of that loaf of bread, that's nine sandwiches. You can easily use the same amount of dough to make 10 or 12, quite small, but still good, rolls. That's 10 or 12 lunches overnight. And also in the power category, they bake faster. 15 to 20 minutes for rolls over 40 minutes for a loaf of bread. Cha-ching! You can freeze them in the bag and take out what you need one by one uh, and there's zero waste that way. You don't even get the end bits, which some people absolutely love. And for some people, they just dry up on the breadboard and end up getting thrown in the bin. Next up is waste nothing. As bread gets older, it changes. When it's past its best for a sandwich, it isn't over. Old bread makes amazing French toast, croutons, crisp breads, breadcrumbs. My book, Bread Every Day, is packed with bread recipes, as well as things you can do with the bread to use it up and make the best of it and really celebrate every stage to ensure that you waste nothing. The least you can do is slice any odd bits and bobs and put them in a tray. Leave that tray somewhere warm in your kitchen, like on top of the oven, for example, and it will just dry out. You can leave them there for ages. When they're completely dry, whiz them up into breadcrumbs. Use them to pan a fish cakes or katsu curry or mix them into a mix for meatballs. Fry them up with a little bit of garlic into pan gratata. Celebrate them, use them, waste nothing because there's massive value in simple breadcrumbs alone. And lastly, now I want to leave you with something else to think about before you click away. Don't click away. We've spoken about the cost, what goes in, the money, and the power. We've spoken about the value of the product that we get out of it, the sandwiches, the crisp breads, croutons, crumbs, in a practical sense. But let us not forget about the value that the process brings to our lives. Sharing stuff normally means dividing it up, right? You share a cake between four people and you each get a quarter. You share a pie between eight and you each get an eighth. But sharing an experience, that's different, for it defies all conventional laws. The sharing of an experience doesn't divide the value, it multiplies the value for everybody involved. Take a minute to get your head around this. Sharing the experience of the bread making process with another doesn't half the value, it doubles it. Answer me this, what are you buying with your hard earned cash? Is it flour, 
yeast? Is it the bread? Is it the electricity? What about fun and joy and craft and satisfaction and the pleasure and the practice in the process? These are the true immeasurable values that double, triple, quadruple when shared with others. Isn't that mad? Sure, the cost is going up in a traditional sense in terms of money, but let us not dwell in those areas and let us instead hold even tighter to those things in life that we do that bring the most value to us and those around us. Yeah! Let us continue to embrace the process of making our own bread as small, as simple and insignificant it may feel sometimes in the bigger picture of what else is going on in the world because small ripples travel great distances and experience shared is value multiplied. Go on, go and make that bread. <laughs> See ya.